For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right. Praise God. Never forget. Let's never forget Calvary. Never forget what he suffered there. Matthew chapter 11. The Bible says, Oh, I tell you, I'm thinking about so much of my own personal life, my own personal prayer life, thanking Him for the suffering. We don't think enough of the That's suffering, right. do we? we? We kind of pass over that part, but, but He suffered much. He suffered what we should have suffered for eternity. Oh, my friends, Him being infinite. You and I being finite. He suffered in those hours what we would have suffered for eternity. Can you imagine? I can't imagine. It's just far beyond my pale and ability to imagine. But I'm glad. I'm glad I can say I'm saved today because of that suffering, that death, the burial, the resurrection of the cross. Praise God. Matthew chapter 11. If you're able to stand, you stand with us. If not, you stand in your hearts. We're going to look at verse 28. 29 and 30. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Father, would you help us this morning? As we look at you, you are our rest, our physical rest spiritual rest and our eternal rest. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. Thank you for suffering for us. As the song mentioned a moment ago, all of your suffering, Lord, we, we owe a debt to you. Not just uh, thanking you for our salvation and praising you. We do that, but Lord, we owe our lives to you. We need to give ourselves to you. Oh, Lord, may we do more. May we be more. May we be holy as you are holy. Lord, may we live in the light of your presence. May we enjoy your rest. And yet, Lord, may we be winning souls in these last days. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I'm grateful for that song and for the thought how much he suffered. Well, we've been preaching on the subject and the subjects, I guess you would say. Uh, Jesus said, I'm the bread. You remember the bread of life? I'm the light of the world. Uh, recently we preached on the door. I am the door. And I believe we can say, I am the rest. <laughs> we, we're we're uh, moving that a little bit there, but he is our rest, that's for sure. He said, I will give you rest. And uh, I, I want us to look at some rest that we find in the Bible, at least three, I want to talk about the physical and spiritual, the eternal rest that we have. Webster says of the physical, point number one, the physical rest, uh, he says the rest means to cease from action, cease from motion, uh, refrain from labor or exertion, be free from anxiety or disturbance. So it's not only our body moving around, but in our anxiety too, it's good to have a rest from that in it and the things that disturb us, and there's a lot in the news today that does disturb us, and uh, you, you certainly have a right to be disturbed about some of the things that are going on here. But uh, I want to talk about that physical rest. You know, originally back in Exodus 20, and I hope you have your Bible marked back there, that's in the Ten Commandments found in Exodus chapter 20. Verse 8 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. <coughs> Verse 9 goes on to say, Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Verse 10, But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Verse 11 says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, God did not rest because he was tired. He was not needing to lie down somewhere. 
but he simply ceased his labor and stopped it and called it rest. And he's making a picture for you and I because you and I do need rest. Uh, this world has, has gone mad. Sometimes they would like to work in a lot of places, work seven days a week. And uh, I have done that in, in the past. Uh, there, were, there were times when the company demanded it and so on. But I'll tell you what, I found out this. God's word is true. We need that rest. Uh, we really do. Uh, God made night so that we could rest at the end of the day. And God made uh, the Sabbath there. And no, we're not under the law now. We're not under the law. We're not under the Sabbath. But nonetheless, it might be, be good if we paid attention to that one right there. Because we all need to rest. And he said, I don't want just you to rest. I want your children to rest. I want you to, your servants to rest. Uh, you know, it'd be easy to say, well, I'll sit back and let my servants work. No. He said, I don't even want your oxen, your cattle to rest. I, I, I want them to rest. I don't want them to be working and plowing on, on the Sabbath day. And uh, so, again, we're not under the law. We're not talking about that. But I'm telling you this. If you'll take your day of rest, you might be able to recoup a little bit and not be quite as sick as you were. I think one of the things that's happened to us in this nation is we've gotten so uh, going and working and working and and we even work other shifts now. Uh, I think that's unnatural. I'll tell you that. I never did like a third shift. I, it like killed me. I worked it for two years. And when I went on it, I said, I won't be on this six months. But I, <laughs> you know, you got a family, you got you to keep going until you get off of it. But uh, that's the most horrible. I'd walk through the plant with a cup of coffee in my hand, two or three o'clock in the morning, and I'd be asleep and walking. <laughs> That's unnatural. I like to work in the daytime. Yeah, right. And God put the nighttime there so that we could rest. But man's greed, you know, sometimes he just, just want to go around the clock there. And uh, uh, because of, uh, of greed and so on. And we, listen, we need to take advantage of the rest there because the body is uh, apt to get sick. And I think many times is sick because we overwork ourselves. And I wonder what would happen. Uh, if we would have done that from our, our birth up to now, if we wouldn't be healthier for it. Now, I'm talking about taking rest. You say, well, I get, to, I get a day off and I mow the lawn. I'm not talking about mowing the lawn on your day off. That's not a rest. <laughs> what, what if you took that rest, that one day a week, whatever day you choose and you're able to do, and you just simply rested all day, you know? Go and eat a little bite, get you a sandwich or something. Don't even cook, or if you want to cook, you could, I guess. But try to rest. How we would be more, it might be a set of us as a set of old, there was not a feeble one among them. Maybe if we'd, if we'd take their rest like we should have. But anyway, uh, I, I tell you, we're not under the law, under grace. But nonetheless, we need to rejuvenate our body. Uh, we need to rest at night. And uh, I found over the years, and I don't rest as good as I used to, and uh, I get sicker. How about you? I don't know. Some of you may have trouble. I know people that are having trouble sleeping at night and uh, getting that deep uh, REM sleep, they call it. You need that. And, and that's when your body does the healing. It rejuvenates itself after a day's work. But anyway, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 12 says, The sleep of a laboring man is sweet whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. In other words, if he's poor and didn't have much to eat, or if he's got plenty and he had plenty to eat, doesn't matter. If he's a laboring man, he's going to do well. When he gets tired at the end of the day, he's going to go to sleep, and his sleep will be sweet. But the amazing thing about a rich man, and he doesn't even have to labor a lot of times. He has people laboring for him. But you know what? He can't sleep. He says... Uh, the rich will not suffer him to, the, the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. He's worried about somebody stealing his money all the time. He's worried about somebody getting what he's got. He's worried that the stock market is going to fall tomorrow, you know, and all of this and all of this stuff. I mean, you're worried about that stuff. Worried about it. I mean, listen, let me tell you something. You just go out and work your day's labor and make your week's wages and go on, and you can sleep good at night. God said so in Ecclesiastes. But uh, why? I've asked myself this question, why do so many people want to be rich when when they get rich they can't sleep? Worry about somebody getting their money. <laughs> I've never really figured that out. I think I'd rather be uh, a little bit poor. Maybe not too poor, but you won't have enough to eat. Uh, 
But anyway, Genesis 49 and verse 15 says, And he saw that rest was good, and the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to, to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Now we're talking about Issachar here. He was one of the twelve tribes of Israel, uh, one of Jacob's twelve sons. And uh, those that worked at physical labor, this was like Issachar. He, he was just a laborer, a worker. And, and when you work, you'll find out rest is good. Boy, when you get tired at the end of the day, and you say, man, I'm exhausted. You just fall in the bed there, go on to sleep. Rest good. All we need physical rest. Uh, but we need spiritual rest more than we need physical rest. We need a spiritual rest uh, uh, even more uh, because Jesus said, even in that verse, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden. He's inviting people to come and be saved spiritually. I'll tell you, we need to, we need to renounce. The world does not want Jesus. And the farther we go with this thing, the, the more we realize that the world is against Jesus. They, they are uh, building their gods uh, all over the place here, everywhere, coming and going. But he's talking about coming to him. He's the only one who can save you and uh, come his way. Isn't it amazing how many ways people want to make to get saved? I uh, was talking about a, a woman not long ago, and, and uh, the person said, well, they, they believe you can be uh, saved, and God's just not going to send anybody to hell does good. Uh, well, the Bible's against that, though. The Bible says you can't go by works of righteousness. You can't be saved by works of righteousness. We have to, we're beggars. We just have to come and receive this free gift or else you won't get it. That's the only way you can get it. And so we're talking about a spiritual rest. That spiritual rest. You know, I got mine uh, almost 50, let's see, this coming Wednesday will be 53 years. I tell you, I got a, I got a spiritual birthday coming up here. Hallelujah. 53 years. I found rest. Not only when you were saved, but you found rest the day you got saved. That's what he's offering you. Come unto me. He said in another place, come unto me all you, uh, the, that, that, uh, and be saved all the ends of the earth. Come and be saved. And then invitation is, is clear. And he's willing to save us. Willing to save us, but you've got to come his way. You can't come your way and my way and some other way. And uh, he said, cast your burden upon him. Cast your burden upon him. He'll sustain you. This is the gospel call that's found in Revelation 22 and verse 17. He says, And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. That's you and me, they're safe. Let him that is a thirst come, if you want to come and be safe. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Now I want to ask you a question. Here in this audience and certainly on, on the, uh, uh, the uh, DVD, do you know for sure if you were to die today, you'd go to heaven? I'm amazed at the people can't answer the question. Uh, they'll, they'll answer the first question right. They don't know there's a second question coming. <laughs> Everybody asks that. They'll say, oh yeah, I know. I, to go. I said, uh, all right, second question answers all my questions. How do you know that? And their eyes close over. <laughs> they, they don't know. If you're not saved, you don't have an answer. If you're not saved, you don't have a testimony. You can't say, I have Jesus into my heart. If you can't say that, then you're not going. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's not a way. You say, I'll just be good. Try to do my best. Yeah, that person I was talking about a while ago said that they could be good is in bad shape. <laughs> Maybe dead by now. They were desperate. Oh, my friend, you can come to a point where it's for God to just give you up. I mean, He's given you time and again to get saved. You need to get saved today. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. He said, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. That means we've all sinned. <laughs> In fact, He said that. That was Romans 3.10, but Romans 3.26. 3, 3 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Oh, my friend, you know how bad it is let me explain to you what the Bible says and how bad I was before I got saved. I'll just put me there. Psalm 38, verse 3. He says, There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. 
because of my sin. A person who's lost, they have no soundness. There is not one good thing about them. None righteous. No, not one. You need to be saved. You need his righteousness. In fact, he goes on farther. And uh, when I think about Isaiah chapter 1 verse 6, I'm amazed at his description. He said, from the sole of the foot, even under the head, there is no soundness in it. But that's all I mean. Head and toe, okay? But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. Ooh, stinking sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. My friend, I'm telling you what Jesus offers to mollify the ointment. He, he, he offers to save by grace through faith. He always offers to give you his righteousness for your filthiness and my filthiness. He gave me his righteousness. Thank God. He said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you will call on him and Ask him to save you today. You can mark today down and say, that was the day, that church, about uh, well little after 11 here. You can say, I know when I got saved. You need to know it, my friend. Don't you think and hope so that we'll not get it on the day you're standing before God. Oh, he died that we might be saved and become sons of God and, and receive a spiritual rest. It says in John 1, 11 and 12, he came unto his own, his own received him not. That was the Jews. But as many as received him, both Jew and Gentile, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And that's all I simply did. I just simply received his gift of grace. I simply asked him to save me. And uh, I said, I want the Lord to save me. And boy, he did. And he will. And if you'll just simply call upon him today, he promises to give you that spiritual rest and he'll feel like a million pounds been lifted off your soul. Listen, every time you go to sleep at night, you've got to know, I might, I, might, I might not wake up, I might die in my sleep and you'd go to hell if you're not saved. Oh, how we need to know. How we need to know. And 1 John 5, 13 says we can know that we have eternal life. A lot of people say, well, you can't know. Well, you haven't read your Bible. Middle of that verse, 1 John 5, 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. And then the middle of the verse says, That ye may know that you have eternal life. And then it goes on to say, That you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Well, I'm telling you, my friend, you can know that you're saved. Uh, a little bit late, if you get over there, you can't come back and do it again, so it'll be a little bit late to find out. Yeah, you can know it, and you need to know it. And you can know it today. Oh, I'm telling you, you're not only saved from hell, but you're saved to rest, a wonderful rest. Uh, you still get tired physically. We're not talking about that. But there's a rest, knowing that you're ready to go. Knowing if he came in my sleep tonight, man, I just, man, we used to pray that little prayer, and I wasn't saved as a little boy, but my mother would teach me that little prayer. Now lay me down to sleep, so you know it. I pray the Lord my soul to keep if I should die before wake, I pray the Lord. So we would pray that. And we didn't know the Lord. We, no. We didn't understand we were to ask Jesus to our heart. You know. Oh my. But we prayed that. And God let us live till we could understand it clearly. And really be saved. Praise the Lord. I, I love him so much. He's given me rest. He said in Psalm 37 and verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass, he's going to hell anyway. Those people that are lording it over us and trying to ruin the country and trying to destroy it. Uh, what was it? The Antifa was threatening the church here to burn it to the ground. Can you imagine openly threatening the church to burn the church down? Man! Why, they would have been in jail for that a few years ago. But well, we're in a different kind of climate now. We're in a different kind of world. Oh, my friend. But he's offering rest right now in this life. Not only the physical rest, but the spiritual rest that you can rest your head on a pillow. I don't have to worry about where I'm going. If I should drift off into sleep and go, 
If you don't know it like that, then you don't know it. You need to get it today. You need to get it right. Simply ask Jesus to come into your heart now. Do it openly, publicly. You don't hide it. You can't be a 007. You can't be a secret agent, man. Jesus, everybody Jesus called. You remember the woman that sneaked up and touched him? Touched, touched him with his garment. She got healed. But you know what he did? He said, who? Huh? <laughs> well, I Jesus knew who touched him. <laughs> Duh. What was he doing? Making her testify publicly. You can't hide it. If you ever really get saved, you're not going to be able to hide it. You'll have to tell somebody. And Jesus will cause you to have to tell somebody. He, I mean, she had to tell the whole crowd. <laughs> of course he knew who touched him. <laughs> the disciples said, well, we all touched you. <laughs> we all bumping you. We jostled around there. That wasn't what Jesus was wanting her to do, though. He was wanting her to testify. Get saved. You can't hide it. Oh, Jesus wants you to publicly announce it. Boy, she did. She did. She came with trembling. Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7 says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. That's what the rest is all about. He can come today. He can come tonight. He can come tomorrow. We don't know when he's coming. But once you get that thing settled, amen, it's settled. And whenever he comes, if you're in him, wow, he'll just call your name and you'll go right on out. Otherwise, the Bible says, two will be working in the field, one will be taking the other left. Two be sleeping in the bed, one will be taken the other left. If you were to come and your wife or husband's not saved and come at night and you're in the bed, you'd be taken. If you're saved, they would not be. Oh, my friend. Don't. Listen, that's a rest. That is a wonderful rest in this life. Peace. That's what rest means, peace. And I have peace because I know the Prince of Peace. Christ is our Noah. And uh, Genesis chapter 5, verse 29 says, And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. You see, the word Noah means rest. And the, the name Noah means rest. And so that's why he said, The same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil. He's going to give us rest. And, and it's a picture of Christ. Who gives us rest. What did he say? Come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. I'll give you salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart. And you should find rest unto your souls. Notice that. It's your souls that he's wanting to give rest to. For well, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Oh my friend. I'm glad there's a physical rest. I'm glad there's a spiritual rest. You can come and receive Christ as your Savior. And just be rested, ready to go. That means you, it doesn't mean you don't ever do anything. We need to go out and preach the gospel. Share it for the lost and dying world. But oh, my friend, you're resting because you, you're all right with him. It's a peace to know that you're ready to meet him whenever he calls, whether you awake or sleep. All right, and then number three, we've got an eternal rest that he's talking about in there. He's talking about all, all three of those things. He'll give you a physical rest. And he'll save you and give you a spiritual rest. And if you get that spiritual rest, then you're going to get an eternal rest. Otherwise, you'll be eternally in uh, the lake of fire. You don't want that. But he said, you'll find rest to your souls. And, of course, Jesus liked to use the Old Testament. He loved to go back and quote the prophets and quote the, the great men of God in the Old Testament there. And because it, it brings harmony. Jesus is always using that because he's trying to bring harmony between the Old Testament and the New Testament. They're, they're the same, one and the same, one continuous book there. And so he borrowed this statement or made this statement, if I'm rest under your souls, from Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Uh, Jeremiah 6 and verse 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way. And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. You know there are people here in my voice today that are going to say that. 
I'm just not going to get saved. I just don't believe that stuff. I don't, I'm not going to receive Christ as my Savior. I'm not going to walk that way. Well, you know what? He offered it, didn't he? He offers it. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He offers it to all. Uh, God is not willing that any should perish, but all should be saved. And all should come to repentance. He wants all to be saved. But some will say, we will not walk therein. And they will not be saved. Oh, I'm afraid I've got some people. I was just talking with my sister the other day about some uncles and aunts that I'm there. They've gone to the other side now. I wonder. I wonder. We don't know. Um, just don't know. Didn't look good. I don't want to say. But it looks bad for some of their testimonies as they left this world. Oh, my friend. Isn't it sad? You don't, I, we all have loved ones like that. People, some, if they're still alive, you need to talk to them and tell them about Jesus. And I, I tried to witness to some of them. I weren't able to see after I got married and moved down here. Didn't see a lot of them anymore. But uh, prayed for them. And uh, some of them, I believe, have said we will not walk there again. Turn with me in your Bible to Hebrews uh, chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. We'll close with this passage of scripture here. Talking about eternal rest now. Give you just a moment, minute to turn there. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 1 says, Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Well, they came short of it in the Old Testament, didn't they? They would not go into his rest. They refused. And they wandered in the wilderness 40 years and they died. Every one of those that would not go in and he let the younger people grow up and, and go into the promised land. They came short of it. They refused to go. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. That's the difference, isn't it? That's the difference. In a congregation, no matter how small or how big, there will be oftentimes people that are saved and people that are lost in it. And the reason, the difference is some had faith. Some said, yes, I want to be saved. I want to receive Christ today. Others said, uh, no, we're not going to walk there yet. Verse 3 goes on to say, for we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, though the works were finished from the foundation of the world. In other words, people reject me, people that say no to me. Uh, it, was, it was from the foundation of the world. He meant for everybody to be saved, wanted all to come and be saved. But he said, no, they're not going to enter into my rest that rejected me. And all that suffering we sang about there in the special era a moment ago, all the suffering that Jesus did. Can you imagine what that means to, to God when people reject his son after he did all that for him? For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from his works. And in this place again, and they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. In other words, it's still some could get saved. It's still salvation, still open. Well, whosoever is still there. Yeah, some could still get in, but, but some of them have said no, and they will not get in. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. That's it. It's real unbelief. Don't believe. Don't believe that stuff. Oh, my friend, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for a young man right now. He's an atheist. Young man. An atheist. Oh, my friend. My friend. Unbeliever. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as he said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. That's the scripture. Uh, over in, in uh, Corinthians, it says, today is the day of salvation. That's what he's saying there. Oh, today, if you hear his voice, harden not. I'm not talking about hearing a voice out there. I don't wait on that. But you realize in your heart, you're not ready to meet him. You realize in your heart, all you, all you got is a hope so salvation. You don't have no, no sure stuff. You better get saved today. Verse 8, for if Jesus had given them rest, <clears throat> then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest 
to the people of God. For the people of God, those that receive Christ, they're going to get that eternal rest. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Just as God ceased and rested that Sabbath day, that seventh day, we started out with a message there talking about that. So Jesus, when he finished, you know what? He, that's what he cried on the cross, wasn't it? It is finished. It is finished. And he finished his works. Now, what do we have to do? Accept or reject. That's the only two options there are. Receive him and be saved by grace through faith or reject him and, and spend eternity in a place called the lake of fire. Hell, of course, is the temporary place. Hell is the <clears throat> jail, if you will. Uh, if they catch you for something, they'll put you in jail. And then you'll wait your trial. And then you'll go into prison or whatever the final judgment is. And that's what hell is. It's the jail. One day there's called a white throne judgment where all that have rejected Jesus shall stand and give an account and they'll be in, put into hell according to their works. Uh, boy, I'm glad I don't have to go to hell. I'm thinking about what, what kind of a hell that I'd be in if I had to go and because of my works I'd be deep. Because I wasn't a nice person. I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad Jesus, I, I'm a nice person now. <laughs> Leave that where you want to or not. And I'll tell you, Jesus will change you on him. He'll change you. You can be saved by grace through faith today. Just simply receive him as Lord and Savior. Just simply call on him and ask him to save you. That is as simple. We used to have a saying, simple as falling off a log. It is. It's as simple as you can get it. Jesus made it for everybody. Nobody needs to go to hell. But boy, they're going to hell by the multiplied millions today. And even more, as we think about uh, some of these young people wanting to burn churches down. Can you imagine where they're going? Uh, they're not going to heaven. They don't have any faith in God. Thinking about burning the church down and, and, and neighborhood around about it and all this. Oh, my friend, they're going to a devil's hell. They're going to be in a deep place in hell through their degrees of hell. And the widest punishment in hell will be horrible. It'll be uh, screaming for a drop of water. And uh, you'll be on fire. Never burning up. You say, well, I'm on fire, I'll burn up. No, you won't either. God will make it so you will just suffer the punishment. And I, to me, there's nothing worse than a, the pain of a burner. I mean, you get burned and you just can't get over it. That you put stuff on it and cool it down, it's still burning. Not like a pain to take a pill for and it, it goes away. Oh, that's a horrible, but God meant it to be that way. After he shed his own son's precious blood, you have no excuse. We have no excuse, none of us. Please be saved. Please ask Jesus into your heart today. I'm glad for that rest. Praise God. The physical rest and that spiritual rest, getting saved. And I'm looking forward to soon being in that eternal Amen. rest. That eternal rest. What will it be when we see Jesus? What will it be when we see our loved ones, our moms and dads that have already gone? What will it be? What a day. What, what a rest that's going to be. What a glorious. And it's for eternity. For eternity. Forever. Forever. Tom leaves in closing. Thank you for joining us for this week's message from Pastor Billy Balcom. For more information about New Beginning Baptist Church and our ministries, please visit our website at www.nbbc280.org. If you have any questions about our church or comments about this video, please use the contact page on our website or send an email to crane.t at nbbc280.org. May the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace for today and bright hope for tomorrow.